So you want a GPU that's great for gaming and streaming but doesn't break the bank and does both of them rather well and can generally handle anything you throw at it? Well, the RTX 2060 might actually be the card for you. In this video, we're going to take a look at Apex Legends, a game that I've spent far too much time, in fact, more time than I'm willing to, you know, divulge, uh, playing as well as Battlefield 5 with both RTX or DXR on and off while streaming with the new NVENC encoder and the newest version of OBS, which features better support for the new NVENC encoder as well. I'll mostly be looking at the averages, although if you want to see the rest of the data that I collected for this video, then take a look at the link in the description to the website where you can see all of that information or a written version of this if you'd rather, you know, I guess watch the first bit and then go read the rest. Either way, it's up to you. So with that said, let's jump into it. Starting off with Apex Legends, I have to mention that it was a bit of a pain to get working in terms of using OBS to actually capture the footage. For some reason, even though the Battlefield 5 test that I actually did first uh, ran perfectly fine, the footage that I recorded for the most part with Apex was incredibly stuttery while the gameplay was perfectly fine so it took a number of iterations of different testing and settings to actually get it to work but when I did get it to work it was actually a pretty good and pretty smooth experience all around. I mentioned that I'm running on basically max settings give or take. I think the texture setting was set to the 6 gig of VRAM that it recommends obviously for the 6 gig of VRAM that the 2060 has so other than that it was basically everything on time. Performance wise you're looking at 112 FPS average for the non on streamed results with the streaming you're looking at 89 fps average which is about a 21 percent performance loss now that's actually not too bad and you can decrease that performance loss by decreasing the output quality of your file or your stream now was local recording with obs using the indistinguishable preset although if you're streaming you're going to be looking at a significantly lower bit rate that you're recording to and therefore a significantly easier time for your gpu to handle on the battlefield 5 side of things Things, it was actually a pretty easy experience to get working and a pretty enjoyable and smooth experience while playing too. The overall output file quality was also pretty great and I would mention that the performance was also pretty impressive at least with DXR off. On DXR off with non-streaming you're looking at 98 FPS average when, and then when streaming again with DXR off you're looking at 89 FPS average which is only a 9% performance loss which again is great to see. When you flick DXR on though you're looking looking at a pretty big performance drop without even starting to stream. As we come to expect, DXR or RTX does tend to have a pretty big performance impact, and in this case we're looking at about 40% performance loss as you're getting 60 FPS average. Now when you turn your stream on, you're then going to lose another 10 FPS to get you down to 50, which is a 21% performance loss from the non-streamed results, and that's actually going to be a pretty big noticeable difference. Obviously it's still 50 FPS, so it's still fine but if you're playing you will start to notice that difference especially in comparison to even the 21% you know, performance loss from Apex where you're looking at the difference of 120 to about 100 so keep that in mind. Overall though the final quality was good the overall playing experience was great and besides obviously as I mentioned with DXR on and streaming uh, it being a little bit laggy a little bit choppy with uh, 99th percentiles being down at 23 FPS for that one uh, overall it was still a pretty good experience and I would still highly recommend the RTX uh, 2060 especially now that the prices seem to have gone a little bit more sensible in the sort of 300 to 400 pound range I would generally recommend one of the more budget offerings from the sort of 320 to 350 range and of course you can always go to the used market for a, a 1070 if you want similar performance with maybe a little bit better value for money depending on what you can get with all that said though if you've got any questions or you want to see anything else tested with this or any of the other cards that have or anything else let me know in the comments down below if you've got any questions feel free to also leave those down there and either myself or the awesome community here will get back to you when we can and of course if you want to support the channel then check out the links in the description there's amazon and overclock gk affiliate links which don't cost you anything but massively help me out when you're buying anything from graphics cards to garden sheds on amazon anything and all is always welcome you can also check out the rest of the links from patreon if you want to support me directly and get cool rewards for doing so or check out humble bundle which is a great way to get cheap games and support charity too or private internet access which is a great and cheap vpn if you're new to the channel make sure you hit that subscribe button for more videos every monday wednesday and friday and you can check out some other videos over there and otherwise thanks for watching hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you all in the next video